All right. So we have uh, Mr. Gene Enoch with us today, and uh, we'll be taking us on uh, artificial intelligence in finance, bridging model portfolio theory with AI-driven insights. And he's also here to uh, share his journey as an academic with us. So this is just like a brief uh, introduction to Mr. Gene, Gene Enoch uh, profile. He's a seasoned professional with over nine years of diverse experience in advanced analytics and customer value management across industries like telecom, fintech, and renewable energy. Having contributed to renowned organizations in Africa and the Middle East, he brings a world of expertise. So with triple master's degree in statistics, data science, and financial engineering, Jane Enoch is on track for CFA. His proficiency extends to financial engineering, demonstrating comfort in portfolio and risk management for various financial assets, including stock, including stock, real estate, cryptos, and uh, their derivatives. Mr. Gene Henock tracks record showcases his ability to deliver impactful results by bridging data-driven insights with strategic business objectives. Interestingly, he's an alum alum alumnus of Ten Academy. We'll be sharing his experience and expertise on artificial intelligence in finance, as I've said earlier, bridging modern portfolio theories with AI-driven insights. And he will also, you know, share his journey at the Academy with us. So I believe this is going to be an interesting, uh, interesting conversation with Mr. Gene Enoch. And uh, let's try to uh, take note of our, our questions at the end of the, his presentation. We can open the floor for questions. Mr. Gene Enoch, you are welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you can hear me, right? Everyone is- Yes, it? clearly, loud and clear. Perfect, perfect. So thank you, everybody. And thank you, Ten Academy, for uh, giving um, me the floor for, to share this, uh, this time with uh, all our, our students, our learners, our future data scientists and technology uh, enthusiasts. So uh, guys, uh, I'm, uh, I think uh, he just did uh, a nice presentation of me. I think I will give you a, be a better one. Okay, I will, uh, I will speak uh, to you directly. I will take you from my path. And uh, yes, so we are going to share like, uh, if I, yeah, one hour together, right? So nice. So I'm exactly like you. I was uh, before uh, sitting where you are today as uh, a learner at Ten Academy. So I will uh, share my journey with you. And uh, we will also speak about uh, what I did after Ten Academy. And uh, then uh, we will speak about uh, some technical side of my work as per today. And we will jump into some nice uh, session. I'm not sure we are going to have the time to handle everything, but uh, for sure, I will give you a global view, OK? I will take you through uh, interesting things. And then we will ask you a question. So from there, I'm going to share to my screen. Just give me a second. I need to share full uh, screen. Yeah. Once you guys are able to see, just let me know. Is that working? Perfect. 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 So, yes, we are there. So yes, guys, uh, uh, this uh, presentation will uh, will be around uh, uh, my journey from Ten Academy to to now. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm Jean Enoch Fiaino. I'm from Benin, and uh, uh, today I'm working at uh, Etisalat Group, if you know. So as uh, we said uh, earlier. I'm going to start by speaking about uh, my journey at uh, Ten Academy, which was uh, a very, a very nice, uh, a very nice journey, guys. I 
I remember it was in 2017. I was a part of uh, the batch one, okay, the, the first cohort of 10 Academy. That time, I think we have some, we, we were lucky because uh, there was no COVID, okay? So we have to, to go together in Accra at uh, Aceh University. And uh, yes, so one of the key things I can remember is that uh, the competition was so high, okay? So that's, uh, that's, that's what happened all the time with 10 Academy. We was around 2,200 people uh, competing to join 10 Academy first edition. And uh, out of that, only 22 people got selected, okay? So I had the privilege to be part of those 22, I think if I had, yeah, 22, I don't know, right? So um, I had that privilege to be part of those 22 coming from 15 countries of Africa. And uh, we had to stay together in, uh, in Ghana, okay, at uh, Accra, uh, and to work together uh, for uh, the first edition of uh, 10 Academy. Okay, so it was a journey. It was uh, a nice one. It was uh, a journey full of learning. That's what I remember. And uh, we have uh, nice courses. Of course, it was the first edition. It was not uh, that much developed as today, but we have some nice, nice, nice courses. I talking about prototyping, for example, big data, design making, design thinking, entrepreneurship, how to unlock potential, how to think outside the bus. So those course was very, very interesting, okay? So uh, for me, it was a nice story because uh, it, uh, it got me transformed completely. Uh, from where? Because uh, before 10 Academy, I was only a statistician. I started my professional uh, life by, so first of all, I was academically a, an agronomist, okay? I did uh, two bachelor degree, one in uh, agronomy and another one in applied economics. So uh, from there, I wanted to do a master degree in statistics, which I was doing when I joined 10 Academy. So once, uh, once I joined 10 Academy and after we take all those courses, uh, what changed for me? I met uh, some of the nice people uh, I can remember now is uh, Dr. Yabibal. I'm sure you have already met him also. So he's an astrophysician and uh, he's also a data scientist. So he's just, let's say he's a scientist, a great scientist, okay? So uh, I remember we had some courses with him and we have some talked with him and uh, he was taking us from astrophysics to uh, AI words. So that was fascinating for me, okay? We speak around big data and we speak about uh, data science and how we can predict the evolution of the uh, cosmology, the, 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 uh, the, everything related to astrophysics. So I was very impressed, okay? So from there, I know exactly that I didn't want to stay statistician. I wanted to move from my statistician life to data science life because I want to scientifically be like him, okay? So I have that role model. It was very nice to me to meet him, okay? So uh, after 10 Academy, after all those uh, those training, those because it was uh, a high learning environment, we was learning uh, 24 hours over seven uh, days, okay? So after 10 Academy, I decided to, to continue my journey as a data scientist. And I know that uh, one of the field, if I look at my country, you know, I come from Benin, of course, you know, Africa, we are not uh, that much advanced in data science before. I think today is much more better, but uh, that time uh, it was not really uh, that much advanced, okay? It was in 2017 only. So especially in my country, there was no side to no company current running data science teams, uh, use case. And um, I had to take that challenge, go back to a uh, country and uh, look for a company where I want to continue my professional life. So I moved from research to professional uh, life. And uh, I started with MTN Benin as a business intelligence specialist. So there, you know, this work you used to be reporting and also, I had the opportunity to cover some of the machine learning use case in the telecommunication industries. So I was in the consumer department. And uh, yes, we used to do marketing. But before we do marketing, we used to look at the number. 
okay we look at the key performance indicator we do reporting we do ad hoc analysis we analyze a lot of data and uh, i had the opportunity to develop some uh, use cases for machine learning and uh, customer value management from there uh, in 2020 i remember that i came back to 10 academy okay i came back to 10 academy not uh, this time as a participant but uh, i came as the manager of the batch three you know that time uh, unfortunately or fortunately uh, we did it online okay we started doing uh, 10 academy online because of the covid 19. so uh, i had the opportunity to lead like over 50 uh, young data scientists like you guys, exactly like you in the same environment, okay? And uh, I was the daily manager there, so my work uh, was uh, to handle on daily basis the operation of uh, the training to support the learners, to uh, design the assignment, to uh, design the use cases, uh, the, to give, to prepare the tutorial, to coordinate the data science team, and uh, it was very nice because it was an opportunity for me to give it back, okay, to, to give it back and uh, to learn also from a new perspective because uh, I wanted to learn from uh, the guys I was helping to, to grow also because, you know, I have to grad like 50, 50 assignments a week. So you will read a lot of code from many students. So being a senior is not like you know already everything. So I was learning. I read, I grabbed them, but I was also learning from them. And guys was so smart. They were sharing so many ideas. So that was very nice. So from there, I jumped into another uh, another job, okay, which was a senior credit specialist with uh, one of the leading energy and uh, financial uh, fintech uh, in my country at that time. So I I started as a senior credit specialist and then I get uh, promote I got promoted into a uh, head of credit okay so there I had my uh, good experience also especially as uh, uh, a manager, a head of uh, department, and uh, yes, so I lead the strategy of uh, debt collection, but uh, everything, uh, the main emphasis was put on accelerating the main KPI again, okay, so which was risk KPI, uh, collection rate, inactive rate, you know, when people borrow money, or if they buy something credit, they have to pay back, okay, so uh, we need to use analytics to bring back the cash so that was my job i have a team uh, uh, that time also and uh, a team of uh, analytics okay so apart from bi we used to develop ml use case also and uh, it was a great time so uh, guys from there i decided to learn more about uh, data science because i was doing analytics i wanted to understand you know i have always been curious about how things work if you can take your computer and run a linear regression or a logistic regression, that's good. But if you can understand why you are running those models and how the computer is actually working, the backend, that's better, okay? So I jumped from there into another uh, master degree in uh, data science, that uh, one was uh, in Ivory Coast, okay? I had great time. I learned about fundamental uh, theory of uh, uh, data science, the things, uh, the mathematics behind the data science, behind the modeling. I take the time to understand everything, okay? And from there, uh, I did in parallel also another master degree in financial engineering. You remember I was head of credit. I wanted to continue that path in finance, okay? But with uh, data science uh, orientation. So today I got graduated from both like Okay, I'm a financial engineer, I'm, I'm a data scientist, I'm also a statistician. That's nice. And uh, this led me to another job, okay, as a senior uh, data scientist today, okay, at Etisalat. Etisalat is uh, a leading company in telecommunication, okay, but uh, we actually got transformed uh, from uh, telecommunication to uh, consulting. Uh, to a global technology group, okay? So there I am part of uh, a big team, a team of uh, more than 30 people. And uh, yes, all of them are data scientists. So it was an opportunity for me to grow, okay? And especially to learn from others because we never stop learning. 
Okay, and uh, yes, yeah, so it's been uh, two years now that I joined that team, that big team, and I've been learning so much from uh, machine learning side, from technology side in general, and also from business side because uh, we do data science, we do machine learning with more than 200 models in production, but more likely we use those uh, models, outputs, I mean the prediction, to do a one-to-one -one campaign. So personalized campaign, you know, you have marketing campaign for everyone. And you can also reach out to your customer with personalized campaign uh, where your competitor are not aware about. So that's what CVM, customer value management is. So this is what I am doing with machine learning there. But uh, as I got to uh, get graduated as a financial engineer, I didn't want to leave that side. Also in Etisalat, we have uh, many uh, con uh, contracts with other clients, okay? As we got transformed into the telecommunication group, we have contract with clients like bank, okay? So we are also working in some of the financial project, okay? So uh, in that way, I wanted to, uh, combine okay that skills in data science that experience that, that I already got in data science with uh, new skills right, in finance okay in financial engineering and uh, yeah so this is why I started uh, personally some other work okay so in the day side I will work in, with uh, my normal work scope at it is a lot the night or uh, after I finish my daily job i can look at the other side like i develop myself by learning by applying and uh, by looking at a new horizon like of financial markets okay and uh, looking at the financial market as a data scientist is something completely different okay so that's why today i'm here i want to take you to around some uh, some of the technical side of that that's career that's work i am doing so <clears throat> yes so today we are going to talk about financial market also that's the technical part of my job okay uh financial market and uh arctic how we can use actually artificial intelligence to leverage okay to empower to superpower actually the the financial uh market and uh, in financial market there is something something important that we call a portfolio okay a portfolio is nothing is actually nothing else than uh, a set of stock or a set of assets more generally for example you guys you are studying uh, web3 i think and in web3 you have what uh, you call the the blockchain ecosystem okay actually you have different blockchain and the main blockchain everybody know is bitcoin second one is ethereum for each blockchain, actually, you have uh, a cryptocurrency associated. For Bitcoin, it is actually the BTC, and for Ethereum, it is the ATH. Sorry. <coughs> so uh, now, ATH and BTC are also assets in the financial market. Okay, they are part of the cryptocurrency market. But you have some other market. You have the stock market where you will see different company. For example, if ten academy grow and they want to like uh, list get listed in the in the in the market in the financial market, they will go into the stock market, right? Because it's a company. So Apple is part of the stock market. Meta is part of the stock market. Amazon is part of the stock market. Okay. So apart from the stock market, you can have some other market. Okay. You can have derivative market. You can have bond market. Uh, you have future market. You have everything. And you have cryptocurrency also. So the thing is, people are investing, right, in projects. And uh, guys like you and me, we will develop company, we will develop new idea, we will sell, we will set up company, and then after we will need investors, okay? So the way for the investor to invest in our company is to actually buy the share of the company, right? So the logic wants that an investor buy a share of a company if he believes that company is going to get value okay the the value of the company is going to increase over time so that's the logic the basic logic okay so let's say today the price of apple share is like 100 dollar 
and tomorrow you are expecting that price to reach like 120 okay so you can buy you can decide to buy but what if you have one thousand dollars okay and you have to decide how much you allocate to apple how much you allocate to btc how much you will allocate to uh us treasury bond in the bond market okay so if you have to decide to allocate one resource like your investment your capital into different assets like that then we will call it uh, portfolio okay because you have to decide for some percentage of that capital to allocate to all the all the asset okay so that's how it works so this is what the portfolio is okay so it's just a combination of financial asset okay such as stock bond other security it can be anything okay so investors they create the portfolio to actually uh, diversify the risk okay to actually manage the risk because once you buy apple and you buy also btc if apple and btc are negatively correlated or if they are not at all correlated for example that's good for you because once an event will impact the price share of one it will not impact the price share of the other one okay so you will still be safe one side okay so that's why they start stop uh, the investor they, they stop investing in uh one only one product only one asset portfolio and they start like building a portfolio of two three multiple multiple kind of asset so you know apart from so that's the traditional way okay to define the portfolio but there is something we call modern portfolio theory and that modern that portfolio theory is actually created by Harry McTonis in uh, 1952 okay and uh, yes so later it got him the Nobel prizes and yeah so that modern portfolio theory how is it different from the traditional one because it wants the investor to mathematically solve the equation like if I want to do an investment I need some return but I'm also taking some risk how do I actually trade off between the risk and the return of my investment so that's the thing okay so the idea is like to reduce the risk without affecting the return <coughs> i'm sorry so that's what will happen in model portfolio theory and uh yes so to do that you can imagine right it's a kind of mathematics i'm just taking you for the history the structure the fundamental things because i like i as i already said to you it's very very important to understand what work before you take your computer and you start like writing code everything it's better you know what is happening the backside so that's how it's working actually so for example we take like we will go quickly it's not something difficult right expecting i take for example two assets one asset is asset a another one is asset b okay so i know that the expected return of the asset a is eight percent so for example asset a can be btc or ethereum then asset b can be a stock let's say amazon for example i know that the expected return is 12 percent also i know information about the risk involved in investing in those assets so basically we calculate the standard deviation of uh, the price return of that asset okay and uh, yes so let's say the risk as the standard deviation is 12 percent for asset a and 18 percent for the asset b then what i want to do as uh, an investor is i have like cash i have 1000 i say okay i want to build a portfolio i want to allocate 50 percent to asset a and 50 percent to asset b so that's normal right it's like the knife way of doing like you know if you know about knife classification it's like knife way of doing okay so it's involving calculating now what is my expected return of the portfolio not uh, for each asset because i already know okay so that's how we calculate it we will take the weight of each of the asset multiplied by the expected return of each asset and we will uh, sum this 
expression and we will get the uh, expect the, the return of the portfolio okay also we can calculate the the risk of the portfolio so that formula is here okay right now it can be like confusing because it's a direct application but i will show you okay in terms of global what the formula looks like it's involved the, the, the standard deviation of both stock and more importantly it involves the covariance matrix of the stock like how the stock how the assets are linked to each other if i stay if I, if I go down you will see that this portfolio is like something similar but we are not using the 50 50 here we are using uh 30 percent of a and 70 percent of b so that's how it works like you can decide what you want so you can start observing something right we have one variable which is the weight the weight that we are allocating to each asset so that's the optimization coming right so it's like we have an affinity of solution someone can decide to allocate zero percent to asset a some other people will decide to allocate hundred percent to asset b so it's the pain so how do we choose okay so but i will i will i will tell you okay so this this equation this equation that we show here we are like try to show them in a more global manner like this is only two but two assets in the portfolio, right? But you can have like 100, you can have like 1,000, it's a pain, okay? So how exactly it will work, okay? So in, in, in the general manner, that's that's how we calculate the return of the portfolio. So I you remember that we, we did it here, right? We just multiply the weight by, weight by, by, by the expected return of each asset and then we sum it, okay? So same thing we have here, but this is math, okay? This is the sum of the weight multiplied by the expected return of each asset. If we have now N asset, that means we get the global calculation of the portfolio return. And in the same way, we will get the risk Okay, we'll get the risk involved in that portfolio. And what we have as constraints is our investor preference. Okay, that's the what the math side is important is good. Because investor will say, uh, okay, first of all, I want 50% of my portfolio be allocated to energy industry. Uh, I want like 20% of, I don't want to take more than 30% uh, of risk or 2% of risk. Or I want at least a, a return of 70%, uh, you know? So you have different kind of investors. So now that's where it becomes important because you will put some condition, some constraints, and yeah? you will add some constraint into those equations and it, you will enter a big optimization problem solving now. So the basic constraint we have is that the sum of all the weight must be equal to one. That's normal because we have 1,000. We want to invest the 1,000 in 10 asset portfolio. Then at the end of the day, when we sum all the weight, once we have solved the mathematical problem, that's problem, right? Maximization of uh, return or minimization of risk. We need all the weight now to be equal to one because we want to allocate 100% of our portfolio. Some other investor, imagine, they will say, I don't want more than 90% of my capital, my base capital be allocated to the portfolio. So he want cash. He don't want all his money to be involved. So holding cash also is a kind of investment, right? Yes. So he will say, okay, I want the sum of W, I equal to uh, 0 0.8. That means 80% of allocation only. Okay, so then uh, you have you have some other countries like this, but that's nice to to know that it's a, an optimization problem behind the machine. This we can solve it in uh, Python in uh, two minutes, but uh, we need to understand why we are solving. How when we we run an optimization problem, it's giving out the weight of uh, the portfolio. We need to understand why. Okay, how why it's uh, it's doing so. Okay. So there is one problem here, because <clears throat> once I told you about this formula, I told you that calculating the return of the portfolio depends on the return of the individual asset. Okay, so this return of the individual asset, if you go here, you will see this eight percent and twelve percent is the expected return of the asset one and the expected return of the asset two. Okay, so if it is the expected return. What does it mean exactly? Expected return means someone something we are expecting 
so we don't have it yet okay so like let's say today we are today date okay and then we are projecting to invest okay for the next 30 days so what is the expected return of the asset a in the next 30 days we don't have it okay so traditionally data scientists quant use historical data to calculate the expected return like i will tell you let's say for example for the last 30 days they will calculate the expected return okay which is the percent change on the price okay the price has the beginning minus the price at the end divided by the price at the beginning it will give you the percent change okay so it will give you how much profit you can do 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent if you invest in that so that's exactly what is calculated here so they use the historical data like okay as in the past in the last 30 days we observed that the stock have did like 20 percent we will take 20 percent as the expected return you get it right also same thing about the standard deviation if what is this the risk involved in the next 30 days okay so it's the same way we use to consider the historical data to actually calculate those okay which is not like too much correct okay it's not that much correct because um what happened in the past will not necessarily happen in the future that's the weakness of uh, the uh, the models actually but it's not actually with me because uh, this one is also an assumption okay so remember i told you here like we are assuming they expecting so it's an assumption so but this is where artificial intelligence is coming in you know that one of uh one part of the artificial intelligence is the learning part okay learning part means uh learning from multiple examples so this is the natural definition of machine learning right you have multiple examples and then you are learning from them okay so uh we have to calculate the expected return in the optimization problem th those expected return are known data we know already so we want to optimize the w which is the variable here so we already know the expected return so that means we need to find a way to forecast you got it right we need to find a way to forecast the expected return okay and we need to find a way to forecast the risk also if we are planning to invest for three days for five days for seven days for 20 days we need to find a way to forecast the return, the risk, the covariance, everything for those days. That's where machine learning is coming in, okay? So I will not develop the machine learning side here, but uh, instead I will take you directly to, I will show you some of the work that I have been doing, okay, from the coding perspective. Now that you understand, I hope, I expect, okay, that you understand the mathematical foundation of why we are doing this, why we are forecasting, we are trying to use machine learning and AI to calculate the expected return, okay, from a mathematical point of view, I will show you now how we can approach that, okay, from a coding view, okay? So, yes, so expected uh, return is uh, is nothing else than uh, price, okay, forecast. So machine learning, from a machine learning perspective, it will be dependent on multiple variable, multiple futures, multiple factors, okay, if you want. So that's how we call it, right? So from there, it's like, it makes sense. In finance, we have something we call alternative data. Alternative data are like data not directly related to finance, but that we can use actually to predict what will happen next in terms of return, okay? And in terms of risk also, okay? So we can aggregate like any kind of data. If you take, for example, a company, if I take Apple, what do you think it will impact uh, the Apple price share? Many things like, fundamental data, technical data, news also on internet, everything, right? So that's how I will show you, I will show you some of the work that's, uh, that's, that we have been doing, okay? So uh, when I speak about fundamental data, I don't know if I still have the, very good. So for example, I take one company, this is real example that I have prepared for you guys. So we are this day, for example, I'm taking this company. So let me take, do I have Apple here? I don't know. Apple, 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 Apple. 
Okay, let me check that right quick here. Okay. We're not selecting everything. Yes, we have Apple, okay? Nice. So if we take, for example, Apple, okay? For this single one day, you can take it for multiple days. But if you take it for this uh, this single one day, for example, you have all information about Apple, then you will have some, like, some fundamental information about the Apple, like, we will define that later, but I'm just showing you how you can actually do ML, okay? So it is possible because you will aggregate some variable that will probably think that it will probably affect the company share, okay? And then you will try to predict the hit. Five days, seven days, whatever you want, you can predict. Also, you can predict the risk. What will be the standard deviation in the next seven days? Like, you know, just be open mind. You can predict everything. When you have the data, you can predict. So the main problem here is how to aggregate the data. That's what we think about. And that's what I'm doing from, I have been doing for some couple of months. I try to set up like a system, okay? Basically I'm using uh, AWS uh, Cloud, okay? And uh, I'm like kind of creating a database there. And uh, yes, so from there I'm like, uh, uh, wait, I have to show you something. Yeah, so I'm, yeah so i'm creating a database there up from there now i am like uh oh it's not this side i was showing okay so aws i will show you the console okay so So I know you will know about creating, let me, let me go there directly, fine. So I, right now I am connected, okay, I'm connected already. So you can see that here you have different kind of service, okay. You have a S3 service for like when you come into the AWS cloud, it's like a kind of, you have to think solution. My objective was to like build a system to actually, uh, save collect the data okay from different sources okay also save the data and also perform analytics on the data this analytic work can be anything machine learning processing anything that you can think about but first of all we need to save the data because the piece of the data the example of data that i've shown you just now before here it's like need to be collected right and need to be collected on regular basis so that's where uh, you need because if you decide to save that on your computer it's going to be very heavy also right so you don't know if how you can maintain that if the code will run. also you need to automate the code to be running on daily basis or on every five minutes or it's the pain whether you are doing high frequency trading or medium or long. So it's depend what, and there is a lot of research, okay? So before you take the decision, before you say that you are able to predict the expected return and you are able to forecast accurately the, the risk, you need to perform a lot of research because it's a lot of scenario, right? Which kind of data you aggregate? which data have to be part of the analysis, which not, which will not be part of the analysis, which model you will use. The model that have been performing good uh, in terms of machine learning yesterday will not be the best model of today. You need to develop some research. You need to do some, a lot of work, okay? So in that way, you need to build the kind of pipeline to save the data first. So that's what we are doing here. You can see that uh, we are using MySQL, okay? To set up an environment for storage, okay? so in uh, amazon uh, cloud you have different kind of service okay you have uh, uh, you have rds service for database storage and everything you have also s3 service for storage on disk like if exactly on your uh, like on your computer disk if you have something you can store but more likely you have uh, this rds which is more very useful for us because we want to take the data from somewhere and uh, put them into a secure place and yeah so that's <coughs> i'm sorry so that's what we try to to do here so we set up uh, quickly a mysql database okay and uh yes once you set up that from here you can connect from every anywhere because you just need to grant this you have to do some devos works create uh, a user give uh, yourself uh, some access once you already created for example someone you need to know how to give him access to which database which table everything like that so now from any 
from your computer, you can read, you can have access to that data set. So that's every day I'm just working. Like you see, that's my connection. This, this the information about my connection, you can see that it's like an Amazon RDS, okay, service. And then you, you have to have a username, then you need the, the schema and the table. So you can do anything, anything you want. So for example, let's see, uh, that's different type of data I'm collecting, right? And let's say, for example, I'm running this one. I don't know how much time it will take because right now, uh, I don't know how much resources I have on the AWS server. But anyhow, so this will run maybe for some time after it will give us the results. Nice. So uh, one of the other thing that uh, I need to, to, to show you is uh, like, okay, how you can read your data set, you can assess your data once you set up things. In cloud, you can assess it from everywhere. This is one part, SQL, right? Another part is uh, there is something we call uh, um, EC2 instance, instance in, uh, in the cloud, okay? So that's like your computer. If you want to run some Python program, for example, anything like uh, codes, okay? You need to run it there. If you want to develop some application, that's a good environment to develop, okay? So we have also set up an EC2 uh, uh, environment, okay? If I go back here, I click right now on EC2. Yeah, so maybe I will be able to show you. So let's see what's my dashboard here. Okay, what do we have? Nice. So. Yeah, so you can see, you can see that I have one instance actually running, right? One instance running, load balancer one, volume. So that means I have instance running there, okay? So if I want to know about my instance, this is my EC2 instance, which is different from the database I just showed you, right? The other one was RDS service, which is MySQL database I created there. This one is an EC2, okay? So, so it's like a computer, you just run everything like you want, okay? Any program you need, you develop here. So it's actually running also. So the thing is, uh, you can uh, access your EC2 instance also from uh, anywhere, okay? So once here, I'm using uh, uh, Visual Studio, but uh, from here, this right now I am in my environment, Conda uh, environment local, okay? This environment is local. If I print everything here, it's local. But uh, more likely you can just connect to your EC2 instance. So SSH, like this code is taking me to, it will, it's going to start my EC2 instance. So now I leave the local computer. I am now in the uh, cloud computer in the EC2, in the, uh, easy to instance. So if I want to check what is there, yes, you can see that I have one folder. Yeah, quant sniper here. I can decide to go inside this. Let's copy CD. Okay, fine. So inside what I have, I have different things. I have some code running. Yeah, so those codes are like programmed to run like every day, right? Okay, fine. So if I want also to uh, check, uh, okay how to chiddle automatic run on those code. Yeah, I take that. I don't know if I go, I remember that code. Fine. So you can see this is how I'm run. So this code, for example, main. So you remember uh, what is, uh, okay. You remember that I have a main code here, right? So this code, which is the main code, for example, if I go here, you can see that it's running like on daily basis every day at uh, uh, 20, 10 p.m., 10 p.m. So that's how we set up the automatic run of the code, okay? So that's something nice you can check later. I will show you later maybe if we develop more. But uh, <clears throat> for now, I will uh, exit again. Uh, my environment, I come back to the local, you can see, Okay, the IP address of the server. Now it's closed. I come back again into the local. What do I have exactly in the local side? Okay, so this, by the way, is ready. You can see I selected the data. I was like, data are, I'm using my local to connect to the server. I'm selecting the data from the AWS uh, cloud. Okay, you can see a piece of work that we have done, like 
it's storing the data every day. You see the insertion date and you see the company and then you see everything like the news. These are, we are going to perform NLP on those tests. It's like, you know, but it's going to be long. So I'm not taking you to that now. What I want to show you instead is like, <clears throat> let's see what we have here. Yeah. So new scrapping technical. Yeah. Okay. Good desktop example let's go here let's check for some of the work that we have here okay so here we have some piece of code you will see that those data that i'm i'm talking about here where where am i exactly i will show you okay once you have your data how you can actually run uh, machine learning on it okay on top of your data so this actually let's say you should be aware of this kind of code because <clears throat> just like a data scientist when you see a code starting as this like you are importing the main library of machine learning okay so you will if you are not i think you will learn everything from that perspective also okay so uh <clears throat> You can see we have multiple functions, like how do we prepare our training data set? How do we prepare our testing data set? How do we prepare the trade data set? Also, how do we build? We have different functions for different kind of machine learning, right? If we want to train a linear regression, for example, we know how to do, to do it. We instantiate the model here. Then we feed the model with the train and the test that uh, we set up already here above, OK? So then you, you have different model. You have lasso, you have reach, you know, those kind of model. You need to know how it's working backside, OK? Not just in, from the computer side. Why do we apply lasso and reach regression for regularization perspective, for example, OK? So. <clears throat> Yes, you have to try multiple models. As I say earlier, it's a lot of research. So we are trying out things like we are trying out things. So random, random forest can also do regression. You know about that. You have SVM. So how to code all those models you need to try. OK, so it's like part of your program. I remember I was like nice to learn from the other guys from batch three last time so it's actually helping me today thanks to those guys i remember some of the name adaki bed um i stefani those guys like you know and all of them you know i i'm remembering more women than men that mean it's like up to you guys like the ladies, how are you doing here in this batch? I don't know. So I'm just taking you through this code for now, but we'll talk about that later. I just want to know to you to get an idea about globally how it's working. Okay. So you we have design trying out things, okay? Just like that, different models of this can be like a tutorial later, but right now it's like more to show you okay so yeah so that's the main function but uh no that's the modeling function okay the engineering function but uh apart from that you need uh, one main function okay to handle everything okay so take some inputs okay you can see that here we are taking different inputs different file different so for example for which sector we want to predict for what will be the first trade date what will be the uh, time window for this testing data set after we build the model we need to select the best model like yeah so that's how we are doing and uh yeah so after you need to run so this for example one uh if if i decide to i hope i'm in the right um uh, yeah so i have python python here right yeah okay so nice so if i take this code that's how it's work it will actually start everything the, from the code i show you it will start if it will start it will do the prediction by its own that's the objective of this is to calculate the expected return we have not uh, even yet uh show how to calculate the expected uh the risk ahead okay so the risk ahead we are not yet show how to calculate that but see it's a lot of work it's a lot of research it's uh just like 
an overview, okay, this time. And uh, I think that uh, we are going to do uh, more also from, um, I just wanted to give you an idea of uh, how the thing is, uh, is, is working. Yes, so uh, this, our program is like starting, right? So yeah, so for each trade date, it's like using all those functions, all those models that I just show you to calculate actually the expected return and it will evaluate them. It will trade them on the training set, okay? And it will uh, actually calculate uh, the best model on the testing set. And then it will uh, also test on out of time data. So out of time data is the trade data, like data that have not been seen by the models. Apart from the testing data, uh, we know, we have something like validation set, right? So it's a kind of validation set. But uh, yeah, so actually for each trade date, we are going to calculate that. And actually this, it's it's running, okay? So it will take time to run. So just notice here, when we want to run our fundamental uh, code, we are giving him the sector name to use. We are also giving uh, him some input, like I show you in the code before that, okay, you need to provide some inputs, okay? And also the data that you already connected and it is stored on in your database. You need to bring it here in as Excel file or CSV or whatever you want, or even read it directly from your database, okay, your, your, your host. And then you will give it as input into your model, okay? And all the machine learning side work will be done, okay? This very fast. If you have a good computer, I'm running this on Mac, but still it's like a bit slow. So that's why I say uh, doing this kind of job is a kind of, time consuming and also resource consuming okay so you need to have time you need to have the good resource and yeah but it's good to explore okay it gives you the energy to know okay like to feel like i'm trying something okay something new i want to innovate so that's how it's it is that's about our, our work so right now i will not be able to i will stop this code con uh, let me stop because it, it will take a lot of time to run, okay? So I'm not going to, yeah. So that's kind of data that also this data, we you, we can integrate NLP, okay? In as future as predictor. So it's like a lot of things that uh, we can handle, we can try out, we can do, yes, always good. So now uh, once uh, your models will uh, be executed, uh, executed so it's actually best again, very good to check you remember that model was so showing to us uh, each trade date right so for each trade date uh actually it is uh, doing some modeling okay some modeling work and uh yeah this it doesn't want to open but okay let me put it here so once it's run all those models it will select the best one okay so for you to select actually the the best one you need to what is going on here let me use this separator yeah so for each trade date for each testing time okay consider this as a testing time this can be uh it could have been today this will be like uh okay let's say today plus one day so it's like this actually the, the, the data are organized by quarter okay so i mean in uh, uh current quarter is this one then you will have the, the current quarter plus one quarter so it's like if you come you will see kind of three months okay from june to september three months separate because right now this algorithm is using like fundamental data to calculate and most likely company release the fundamental data uh, every quarter every end of quarter every starting of the next quarter okay so it's logic that we are going like we use the previous quarter data to predict the next right it's like yeah so uh it can be daily also because many features has to be added for example the news that i show you also the technical indicator i didn't show you everything now because we don't have time it's like yeah so models name that got the champions model every quarter every quarter you have one champion model like it can be rigid it can be tomorrow it can be next quarter is it you see two consecutive quarter, quarter it was rich but then it, it it's random for us then it's become hbm and again logistic regression even logistic regression was part of the game so it's like changing right so still we have not tested all the models we, we just like test some and also you can see that we didn't perform much more grid search 
hyper optimization you know those things are like things data scientists need to understand and work on right so it's like yeah so good to test so that's kind of output we get we get first the the best model okay once you get the best model you will get you will use your best model to to do the prediction right so after you will do the prediction like you do your prediction and yeah this will i don't know why it's yeah yeah so you will do your prediction and, and and this okay yeah so it's actually not well recognized but it's fine okay it's fine so yeah so you will you will use your model you will do your prediction you will predict your return okay once you, you predict uh, the, the return then you will predict the risk also there are a lot of the framework okay remember and uh, then you can do your portfolio optimization for portfolio optimization as per the equation that I show you before on the presentation side, yeah, there is full package in Python that can do that for two minutes, okay? Once you have the return and you have the risk, you can do that quickly, okay? You can do that. I have I have the, the, the code for that also, uh, some of the methodology, but uh, it will take uh, time now. I think I'll show you next time, okay? So, yes. Apart from so that's that's how it works from a global point perspective. Like that's a global view of uh, what I'm doing. Okay, so you see there is a lot of work uh, to to cover again. Okay, so it's not like uh, it's uh, it's not like everything is uh, is done. No, this uh, explore this is a, a exploration. What is that thing? It's not coming to, okay. So this is exploration, okay? And uh, we still lots to come. We need to put commitment, do research, try to publish some paper based on the work. Once you have your data and your framework, your methodology very clear, okay? Because that's the most important. If you want to publish scientific paper, that's what you need, right? You need a clear methodology and you need to uh, get accurate data. That's part we are uh, covering. And you need to develop now goods, okay? And you need to do the good discussion. Then you start publishing some of the findings of your research. But it's like a lot of research, okay? It's not uh, months, teens, it's uh, years, okay? So now we've uh, like, we are thinking how to do for the next to go next step. So uh, that's what I do. Okay, from the tech, this is what I wanted to share uh, with uh, with you guys. Okay, and uh, yeah. So uh, guys, you today you you are doing this training of ten academy. I have to tell you something very clear. Uh, when I did in batch one, we didn't have that. Uh, we were not that much lucky, okay? We had uh, great ladies also in in that uh, that time. I have some good friends and they are performing very good, okay? So I'm kind of inviting you to stay focused, okay? This, this is your time, this is your moment. See what is happening with AI from last year to this year only okay after covid it was ai where like the uh, generated uh, test model the llm web3 also you are doing i think today you are covering all the speciality you have expect you have that perspective to impact okay and data is the new oil you need to understand that you have in your hands something very no what i did extremely powerful it depends how you explore the things it depends how you take it serious okay i know this training of 10 academy is not like easy because it's a 24 7 days like learning environment i know how we have pressure i know you know Yabibal, he taught me also that as in when he speak, you know, he's like, I like looking at him giving courses because he's like 
so distressed. He looks like he's in his environment and he have, you know, um, since 2017, I'm trying to reach him, but I'm not able, you see what I mean, right? It's like, he used to play with his beer, like when he's getting, he's doing the girls to like distress. Find yourself in, in what you are doing, okay? It should not be like a challenge for you. It should be your work, okay? So today you have, a special, you have, uh, you have Web three specialization. You have uh, machine learning and data science. You have data engineering. You have also generative models. It's very important. Web three is going to explode also. Okay, if you look at the, the the recent news, the recent data, it's very important. I can see in my network many, many, many women also, especially women, men. They are doing very good from the past promotion to today. I, at least I handled the, the batch three, okay? And I can say that I'm proud from what the guys are doing. Sometimes I can see some of uh, my students, they publish things on LinkedIn. I'm just like, wow, it's nice. It's good, okay? So I want you to put commitment, okay? I swear to you, I was not that much good. 2017, I was not. I was like... A statistician and i was the i was looking like the only guy speaking french in the team you know my english is not good i'm just like try i'm coming from being in a french speaking country excuse that so in 2017 <laughs> most of the time I, i've been confused okay by because the guys the team was so diversified we had women coming from law background like you know other people coming from business background, other people coming from his, like it was a, a merge. It was amazing. And the thing is, sometimes we had some technical courses and yeah, so they are able to handle. Why not you? Today, I know you have an entry assessment, right? A pre-assessment to get selected, even into the week zero, okay? I work on that in 2020, so I know it's improved now. So it's like you already have the baseline. You are going to do great things. Web3, blockchain, today in Africa, we have challenge. Cross-border payments. Does it mean anything for you guys? Cross-border payment. Today, I did like a transfer of, of Western Union to my daughter. It was like taking fees like crazy. I was like, guys what are you doing like if if i have to take through the blockchain to do that transfer it if, if it was it was accepted there or if uh, they had the, the the wallet for for the blockchain for the ethereum for or something if i had to do that it will not take that much fees so the fees of the remake things cross-border transfer in africa google about that see what is happening about fintech Okay, in Dubai, I am living, there is a boom in uh, real estate, but you know, it's a field where investor only enter the market when they have big amount of money. Now in the blockchain, one of the blockchain, there is one thing we call real asset tokenization. From one real asset, you can create a token and from that token, you can actually break down the share, the big asset. The, the, let's say, for example, a real asset, you can break it down into small share and rise from another way than waiting for only one investor to break one million on the table. I'm telling you guys because I know what I'm, I'm living there. Okay, so some of the idea of are there, you can think about. Okay, so the real application, when you follow the course, don't tell yourself, you are, I'm just following the course. For me, I always tell myself, I need to have in mind an objective because before I enter the, the course itself. Yeah, so that's how it works. So that's what you need to do. That's what I am expecting from you guys. Okay, yeah, so what to say? Stay curious. 
always stay curious. If you don't understand something, ask. You have to increase your level of participation, okay, in the community. It's only by sharing knowledge that you will get knowledge. I know what I'm talking about, especially in the tech world. I learn so much from the 2020 community. Ladies, guys, they were so active, okay? You have to be active. Connect for five minutes, write something, challenge someone, okay? The tutor that you have, they don't have to rest. They are paid for that. They are getting paid for that, okay? So it's like you need to challenge them to get the max of learning you can, okay? So that's what I would advise to you, okay? In terms of career, you need to be open also to change. Like, because tech is, if I go back two years ago, it was not like the same, okay? We don't have this, uh, everything uh, from AI, even we don't have generative models, we don't have anything like that. But today we have, we have everything we have. And so you have to understand that it's growing fast. So you need to stay adapted. You need to stay connected to the market, okay? So you don't need to stay far. So you need to keep learning. Of course, you are doing, you are expert, but you need to stay focused, learning. What is the new things that are coming? Okay, let's embrace the change. Like, let's be open mind. Let's try new things, okay? Don't be close. Try to be like kind of open because in that case, the future is yours. So yeah, so last thing I will say is how do you balance actually your life in tech? It's nice, right? It's you go to work, you come back to home, you learn. For me, I, I'm i trying. I'm not sure that I'm the best advisor here, but it's like, you know, <laughs> at least I have that much small experience. <laughs> yeah, so I can share with you okay so ah uh, it's like our one hour is now done i don't want to take uh, much of your time you know there was there, there are a lot of team a lot of team to share but uh uh we need to maybe meet again in proper tutorial in proper session from i can give you challenge also like you know i will discuss that with the academy team and we'll see why not publish some paper together also like that's my dream so guys i'm very happy to speak to you today and this is ending my presentation this is ending my speaker you are most welcome to uh with all your question and uh yeah so what do you want to know i'm not sure that i tell everything i couldn't have the time to tell everything but we need to to try okay so please answer. I, i'm here to answer your question ask ask me anything you want i will give you the best answer i have in my hands thank you yes thank you so much mr Enoch. really appreciate that presentation uh that's a very 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 wonderful one thank you so much for your time and for the knowledge sharing so guys we have mr Enoch here. so let's try to bring up our questions you can mute your mic if you want to ask question or you can send your questions to the chat if you have questions Kindly unmute your mic, or you can send the questions to the chat. This is the one type. Okay, Renov, please go on. Okay. Oh, thank you, Shainok for giving this a wonderful talk. Uh, I really appreciate that. I'm Rudolf Segbeji. I'm from the same country uh, as you. Um, I would like to ask you how long it takes for you to get 
confident uh, in this domain of um, machine learning? Yeah. This is my first question. Okay. So I would like you to answer that first and I will bring this kind of on. Okay, sure. So yeah, thank you so much, Rodolf. Um, um, it's a nice question actually you, you ask because uh, yes, as I told you in 2017, we didn't have a, a, a training oriented machine learning or data science or model training like something like that. It was more global, it was like innovation, okay? So, and we have uh, less time than you, so yeah. So I would say I learn everything by myself, okay? So, and by by listening, by, by looking at how others people are doing, like the in the confidence side, because you ask about confidence. Uh, okay, to be very honest, I've been, I am a guy, I, I used to, to, to have confidence in myself because uh, since the small age, I, I try to work with clear objective. Like I don't deviate from my trajectory. I, I know that, okay, when I was statistician, when I was not statistician, I knew I want to do something related to numbers. In my country, you know, there are very few even the training in statistic is like very few. Okay, so it's not like uh, you have uh, you you have seen everybody doing it and you want to do. Okay, so we have only like two or three schools of statistics in my country, and uh, yeah. So I knew that you know I started from agronomy. I knew that I wanted to do statistic, something related to number. Okay. And uh, yeah, once I start statistics, uh, you know, it's more explainability than prediction. You understand what I mean, right? It's more explainability than prediction. So I know that I want to to do more, okay? And uh, I know something. I when I I understand that there is machine learning. Yeah, self confidence come by itself. Most likely, when you are working, okay, and you are getting um encourage or uh, supported by your manager is ma it matter also huh? i need to tell you mm, that's it's matter because uh i remember when uh from even from 10 academy like you know arun was looking at me with uh, high expectation and uh he used we, we after 10 academy you know we stay connected for every single thing that I, I had to do, I used to tell him, okay? So we stay collecting and he used to push me. He's that person, he don't give you peace if he know that you have the potential uh, in you, okay? He don't give you peace. He He's like, he was pushing me like, leave Africa, go abroad, go into a big team, learn from others. Don't get, uh, don't stay in your comfort zone don't look at because you have a good managerial position you will not go again and learn things you have that potential in you you know in my family it's not like and that's normal in my even in my country it's not like everybody can understand that kind of job that we are doing but once you have someone that can understand okay and in, in your potential and is pushing you okay when you you message him he replied to you and he he's pushing you, he's challenging you, uh, then the confidence will come, okay? You will feel like you can do it. Even uh, me, it's a very strange story. I tell you when I was, when I came in 2017, I asked Aaron, why are you selected me? Because I couldn't speak in English, right? I'm telling you the truth. It's like not, uh, there is no joke in that. I used to be confused about what's up because of maybe the language, right? So it's like, I didn't, I couldn't speak English. I was like, you know, so yeah. For some other people, maybe they will like go back to their country and stay in the French side. Okay. For me, I was like, I move, I go to MTN there. It was a bilingual environment. There also I have 
great boss, great manager, you know. I was recruited as business intelligence, but I just try one day, one machine learning. It was just very simple, re logistic regression for a CVM, a personalized uh, bundle product, and it works, it works out. You know, once it works out, my manager start like giving me more project to handle. So the confidence start coming because I was the only guy trying such thing, even if it was very basic. I feel like I was bringing something new in the table, okay? And I had, I knew I had the support of my manager and also I had the support from 10 Academy. That was very helpful. And that you don't need to worry about. 10 Academy is, they always give you 100% support, okay? You just need to not be afraid of leaving your comfort zone. Yeah, so Rudolf, I don't know if I answer your question, right? It's yeah, you do. Thank you. Yeah. And then my next question is to know um, how do you publish the papers if uh, you are in industry? I don't know. I, in my mind, I thought uh, only people in in academy, uh, in re yeah, in research that probably often put papers in this domain. So. As you were talking about publishing paper, so I yeah. wonder how, yeah. Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, you are right. You are right. So that, that's another thing that you need to, to handle in, in life. You know, before 10 Academy, I was part of uh, a lab, okay? Lab of uh, research in biomathematics, leads by a professor of biomathematics, okay? And forest estimation. He was the one who told me about 10 Academy and he pushed me to compete to come to follow the training. He's my scientific mentor. And in that lab, I was doing one master's degree and it was a master's degree in biostatistics. Okay, so basically statistical science applied to life science. Okay, so that's, that's a master's degree was not a professional master's degree. It was a scientific um, a research master degree you know there are two two kind of master you you have the professional you have the research this one was a research ma uh, master degree so after that i was supposed to go with phd but i decided to continue a bit with professional life okay so uh yeah after i leave i left the lab i started emptying i didn't forget everyone you need to stay connected to your network that's very important Okay, so it's not like today, if I need to publish a paper, I don't know where I can go to get help. You know, that's one thing. There is the lab there. And also there is STEM Academy. STEM Academy is growing fast, okay? We are becoming university. You know, in 2020, it was not paper, but uh, some of uh, our learners, they publish uh, uh, some um, article professionally online. So I think there are some, yeah. So they, I, I remember they did some publication. It's not, it was not scientific, but uh, it was good. Also, see, you are led by a scientific director here. In Ten Academy, you have Yabe Balfantai. He's a doctor. He's, uh, yeah. He's a doctor and he's doing very good in terms of research. See, if anything serious, he can help. And Yabe Bail, he supervised me in 2020 when I was leading the batch three. Okay, so that side also you need to maintain your relationship. That's why I tell you when you, even when you finish 10 Academy, you need to really uh, continue uh getting stay in touch with everyone okay that's very important okay and uh yeah so for me if i i feel like if that's my way to come back because see 10 academy can just become uh, i don't I, I wish a university on with a master degree for two years like 
you know, instead of certification, that's also a dream for me. That I, I want to see people doing this kind of thing for two years. Okay, it's like that's the path into the research, also, right? Yeah. So uh, the third way to create uh, to to publish paper is to create uh, a company and to have a research lab. If you create a company, you have a research lab, and uh, yeah you are doing some research, I think you can publish. You can publish, you have journal, you have, yeah. They will you will, they will look for some condition, but you can publish, you can start. I know some people doing that in Ghana itself, okay? I know one of the, my senior doing that. He's not doctor, he's engineer, but he creates his company and he have published a lot of paper now in the field of AI in healthcare, okay? So his name is Darlington Akoku. You can check on LinkedIn. So he's doing very good. Recently, he's been like in US meeting Bill Gates and yeah. So you need to have some kind of that vision and people you want to be like. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Enoch. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you, Enoch. Uh, we have uh, some questions in the chat. So okay. The chat, just check and provide answers to that. Okay, okay. Okay, how was your first week? From uh, Fanuel Abibi, how was your, your first week? Kind of uh, over here. <laughs> over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if I... <laughs> you mean my first week at 10 Academy, right? Yeah, so... You know, it's, uh, yeah, fine, fine. So in 2017, it was very different from in 2020. So me, I consider myself as uh, from the batch one and also from the batch three because, yeah. So in 2017, we was there physically at the HSE University, right? So, uh, yeah, so it's uh, it was, full of uh, the calendar was uh, was full okay i have to tell you it's 10 academy used to be that uh, that with a lot of pressure okay and uh, it was uh, one month okay we have to cover uh, many things uh, so things goes quickly but uh, if uh, if you are related to you are relating to the kind the, the the pressure side and yeah so I will say the, the first time I saw Yebebal, okay? Okay, he came and he said, that's cause like, I, I will take it as my first week because he came, he said, okay, now I will introduce you to big data. And I was like, okay. Then he said, he showed us like, he did a nice presentation and he 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 told us okay now uh you have an assignment you need to connect to to create a twitter development account you need to connect to twitter you need to collect uh, data about uh who is speaking about africa and what they are speaking about that's your assignment for tomorrow i was like what <laughs> what is he saying so it's it's like <laughs> I'm telling you guys this. I I was more than confused. So because you need to know what that's I, I was not even on Twitter myself. And he was asking me to who is talking about Africa and Twitter and what are they talking about? How am I going to survive in that? So it was impossible, right? So but yeah, so that's what the kind of pressure i was i was feeling okay so in the other side it get my i it it, it motivate me okay it show me that I, I still i have to learn before i come to 10 academy i was thinking i know everything but when once you you are in 10 academy in the very first uh, very first week you quickly understand that okay life is not that that much easy right so, so it's like it was same for me <laughs> Even in, uh, yeah, so guys, <laughs> I follow everything from even the pre-assessment, everything. I designed that in 2020, okay? So 
I know how the numbers drops from uh, week zero to week one. <laughs> that's if that's what you mean. Also in in 2020, uh, yeah, it was like the same. Yeah, but he had that kind of things. You know, it's, I cannot explain. He just come and he introduced you suddenly to GitHub, and he like you have to to start using you know Git push commit everything like in one single day even if you don't know you have to to handle and send the assignments okay so i remember in 20 in 2020 that's what happened with uh, batch three people was like in that morning the first day it was not even the first week we are finished with uh with github and everything and uh, we have an assignment about the twitter assignment okay so it was yeah so <laughs> it's been always like that okay so 10 academies are very because the the kind we are using only three months uh, to give that uh, training but it could have been like two years we'll give that same training but now we are doing it very fast so it's like i understand how the pressure is but the only way to help yourself is to collaborate to talk to each other okay to stay in the community to stay active in the community okay so that's the only way to do yeah and uh yeah it will everything will be will be will be good okay yeah thank you another question do they provide you separate training aws uh, uh no no so it's uh again again i learned by myself also if i tell you that for the clouds i just learned it in less than three months ago will you believe me because i was doing that um, i was finalizing my master's degree in uh, work country university master in financial engineering i feel like i need clouds uh i couldn't store my data like yeah so that's what that is the personal work at work uh we'll use the, some different the company have everything we'll use okay but even there it was not on cloud right so we have our own server yeah we start so basically for job you will need the good sql uh, sql uh, skills for querying database and stuff like that but for cloud me i learn it from internet and that's why I, I am telling you you need to be yeah focused i learned it from internet and only three months ago i learned that and i'm able to connect to store everything and to run my daily job everything yeah, yeah. less than three months i am serious yeah so you can do i can recommend you some of good training for that also i think in 10 academy also they give yeah so you will yeah, someone let me let, let me uh, want to talk. Right. I hope I've answered the question. There, yeah. No, not question. Just to ask you the name of that researcher who established the lab and then now in uh, USA. I think ah. you have mentioned. Ah yes. I want to... Ah yes, for sure. For sure, this guy is like. Uh, yeah. You mean Harry, right? Marco is. Oh, I cannot copy that. Why? Actually, I want to copy and give it to you, but it's like not. Okay, it's now. Fine. Yeah, later he got the Nobel Prize in uh, economics for that because she did great. You see, if you check about portfolio optimization, you will see. His work, he's the one, the father of uh, modern portfolio theory. And yeah. Most welcome. Any other question from anyone? Thank you, guys. So thank you, Mr. Enoch. That was a great, great, great presentation and, you know, a person answering session with you really appreciate your presence here and uh i hope you always listen to our call when next we reach out to you yeah sure sure sure, yeah. sure 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 let me give so you my leave. yeah yeah yeah
let me let me send you my my link in also i think you can share i think you have it right but let me share it here uh i'm always open for to speak to my guys connect let's discuss let's share things okay so okay, guys we have his uh linkedin handle on the in the chat so we can reach out to him and connect with him so thank you so much guys for joining the call and we really appreciate to mr enoch for uh for acknowledging our our visitation thank you so much so guys i uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh bye 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 uh, thank you bye bye